Rebecca, once more, thank you for playing. And to the church, thank you for the gifts. I assume there's gifts in there. Maybe just a card. I don't know. Whatever it is, thank you. Well, I'd like to invite you to take your Bible and turn with me to 1 John chapter 5, and then I'm going to add a verse. It's not in your bulletin, but we're going to go to John 3, 2, 22. But first, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, and I, and I am reading from the New King James. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Now go back one page or two chapters to chapter 3, verse 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for being with us today. And Father, now that we've opened your word, we open our hearts. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be accepted in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our sin to return Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I want to ask you something. Do you remember when you first received your very first driving license? If you were like me, you just sit there and stared at it. You know, you finally got it. I mean, I, I was 16 years old, and that was the longest 16 years of my life, waiting to get that driving license. You see, I couldn't wait to get into my brand new used 1962 two-door two door hardtop cherry apple red Chevrolet Bel Air. Amen. My dad traded a sewing machine for that car. <laughs> but you know what? My dad was going to see to it that I had a car when I turned 16. You know, I, want, I, I wanted to get started driving off into the wild blue yonder by myself, not with somebody else in the front seat. You know, when you just have a permit, you got to have someone else. But you also remember before many of us were allowed to drive at that young of age, we had to take an offensive driving course. Well, now that I'm 65, I wonder, <clears throat> defensive? Why wasn't it offensive? I mean, come on, we're driving a huge a battling ram. And our competition is other cars that sometimes are bigger than ours. They also have battling rams. Now, for some of us, before we started driving, our father would pitch us the keys and say, be careful, son. Be careful, daughter. And if your parents were like mine, what did they do next? They probably started praying. <laughs> praying that you'd never drink, and especially drink and drive. Praying that you'd keep your eyes on the road. Praying that you would be home on curfew. Now, I can honestly say, folks, I was never late. Whatever my, my curfew was, I was home before our own time. I cannot say that for my baby sister. My daddy had to go looking for her many a night. Not me. But I was praying. What was I praying for? Praying that my mother and father would never know where I'd been, how fast I was driving to get there, and praying that they'd never find out who was with me in the car. Prayer. When did we start praying? How old were we when we started praying? That's what I want to discuss. I want to discuss what our prayers were like back then, what our prayers are like today. Yeah. We're going to look at our sermon series, The Shake Up. We're going to wrap it up today. This is Sermon 4 of 4. 
And if you missed any of the first three sermons, you can find them out here in the foyer. Just look for my name on the last three sermons, or you can go to the website and watch them. We're going to discuss this morning the principle of answered prayer. Does God give us a principle to answer our prayers? I hope you have your Bible still turned to John, 1 John chapter 5 because we're going to be using those two verses, 14 and 15, to examine the principles of God answering our prayers. Let me begin with a story that possibly most of you have heard. It's a story, by the way, it's not a true story, so Glenn, you don't need to fact check me on this. It's not true, and it's not really biblical, biblically correct, but it does have a point. So stay with me. It's a story about a huge rainstorm that came up one year. And it wasn't long until the river beside this man's house began to rise. And it looked like it was going to overflow the banks. And he knew that if it overflowed the banks too much, that he might die. He might drown. So he began to pray to God. Say, Lord, I know you're an all-hearing prayer answering God. So I'm asking you, Lord, to save me. And in his heart, he knew God heard him. And he knew that God would send help and rescue him. Well, the river began to rise. And it wasn't long until a four-wheel drive pickup truck drove up by his house, offered to give the man a ride. But the man said, no, thank you. God's going to save me. So the man in the truck says, Okay, have it your way, and drove on. Well, the river kept rising more and more, and, if, and it wasn't long, and it overflowed the banks into his yard. And this is when a neighbor from down the river drove up in the boat. He said, hey, neighbor, get in the boat, and I'll take you to safety. And the man said, no, thank you. God's going to save me. So the man in the boat says, uh, okay, have it your way. And he Went on down the rising river. Well, soon the river became so bad that it, his house was almost underwater. So he did what many people do. <laughs> he got on top of the roof. Well, when he did, a helicopter was flying by and saw him. So the man in the helicopter hovered above the house, dropped a ladder and says, Grab it and I'll pull you up. The man says, No, thank you. God's going to save me. So the man in the helicopter says, Okay, have it your way. Flew on. Well, sure enough, the river overtook the man's house, and he drowned. When he met the Lord in heaven, he said, Lord, Lord, you promised to save me. What happened? And the Lord says, well, I sent you a pickup truck, a boat, and a helicopter, and you refused all of my help. Hopefully you get the point. You see, often God answers our prayers, but his answer may not always be the way we think yeah. he should answer our request. Honestly, how many times have we prayed for something, and when God answered our prayer, we're surprised with his answer? Or because God didn't answer the way we thought he should, or the way we asked. Sometimes we think God didn't hear my prayer request. In reality, he did. And he answered, but just not the way we ask. And I'm going to give you an illustration on what happened to Kathy and I recently. Many of you know, three or four months ago, the conference was going to move Kathy and I to Monroe. We didn't want to go to Monroe. We like it here. So we started praying, Lord, please, just leave us where we are. I went and talked to Elder Die, and I said, please reconsider. We just wanted to stay here and in Minden. A few weeks later, Elder Die calls me. I'm in Fort Smith working the disaster floods up there. 
And he says, David, I prayed about your request. I thought about it. The conference officials and I have thought this over. And my heart was sinking. I just knew what he was going to say. He's going to send us to West Monroe. Now, folks, I want you to think about this. He was going to let me live in Texas and pastor two churches 120 to 150 miles away. That was not going to be easy. Not only for us, but for the churches over there. But he said, Elder Dye says, would you consider staying in Shreveport and taking Texarkana back? You know what, folks? I didn't even call Kathy up. I didn't even take a breath. I said, yes. Now, here's the thing. That was not what we were praying for. But God heard our prayer. What we found out later was Texarkana was praying that we would come back. We didn't know that. So the Lord answered both of our prayers, just not the way I expected my prayer to be answered. So you get the point, folks? God answers our prayer, but sometimes it's just not the way we asked it. You know, when I started this series on prayer, I had to do a lot of studying. And because I did a lot of studying, I learned a lot about praying. In fact, I want to read to you volume one of the testimonies, page 296. Listen to what Ellen White says. The prayer of faith is the great strength of the Christian. That is why he, she's talking about Satan, that is why he insinuates that we have no need of prayer. The name of Jesus, our advocate, he, Satan, detests. And when we earnestly come to him, Jesus, for help, Satan's host is alarmed. It serves his purpose well if we neglect the exercise of prayer, for then his lying wonders are more readily received. You realize what she said, folks? When Satan sees us praying, he's alarmed. So guess what he does? What? He doubles up on his efforts to discourage us. He doesn't want us to pray. Today, as we look at how God hears and answers our prayer, and I want to begin by asking, now listen very closely, I want to begin by asking, how does God answer our prayers? Now, folks, I want you to realize something. Our prayers that are answered by God are not supposed to be something out of the ordinary. When God answers our prayers, it should not shock us. I mean, after all, why would God tell us to pray to him if he's not willing to answer our prayers? Fair question, right? So to find the answer is why I want to end our series by examining the principle of answered prayers. Let me ask you, do you think Jesus was ever surprised on when and how the Father answered his prayers? John eleven forty one 41 says, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He knew God had heard him. Hopefully you remember in our second sermon in the series, we looked at how the disciples went to Jesus and asked them to teach them to pray. You see, they had heard Jesus pray. They had saw the, and heard the, the power of his prayers. And then they watched as God answered his prayers. So this morning, I hope to show you that God wants to answer our prayers the same way he answered God's, uh, Jesus' prayers. And we're going to use our scripture there in 1 John 5, 14 and, 20, uh, 14 and 15, and 1 John 3, 22, because these are great te- texts that proves God wants to answer our prayers. 
And hopefully these verses will help us tap into the principle of answered prayers. You're going to need a pen and a bolt and insert. If you do not have a pen, there should be one in front of you. Because you're going to fill in the blanks. We're going to look at the three keys of how God answers our prayer. Key number one, God answers our prayers when we pray with a pure heart. Pure heart. Friends, please get this straight. In order for God to answer our prayer, we have to have a pure heart. Look at verse 14 again. It, talks, it uses the word confidence. I looked this up in the SDA commentaries, and that word means freedom of speech or boldness. The commentaries also say that John's thoughts concerning the possession of eternal life and belief on the Son of God suggests to him the confidence that the believer may have in approaching the Son, and thus the subject of prayer is introduced. In other words, we can have the boldness, we can have the freedom to speak to God and speak our heart. After all, doesn't he really know what's on your heart? But how can we have this confidence before we go to God? How can we have this confidence if our heart is not pure, right with God? Never forget what Psalm 66, 18 says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Yeah. So what do we do? What do we do to have a pure heart? Well, the Bible gives us the answer. It says we need to confess our sins. 1 John 1, 9 says if we confess our sins, He, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from how much? All, all unrighteousness. If we're forgiven of all unrighteousness, we have a pure heart. You know, I've heard it said before that 1 John 1, 9 is actually the Christian's bar of soap. You see, the moment we confess our sin, God starts washing us clean. And please do not forget what James says in chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. This is from the Tree of Life version. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so you may spend it on your passions. In other words, we ask, but if our motive is wrong, then God can't answer our prayer the way we asked. We need to pray the prayer that King David prayed in Psalm 139, 23 and 24. We need to pray, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Our prayer must be, Lord, search me and show me my wickedness. Testimonies to Ministers, page 484 says, When we seek him with a sincere heart, a pure heart, we will confess to him our defects of character. And he has promised to receive all who come to him in humble dependency. That's the first key for God answering our prayer. We have to go to him with a pure heart. Folks, often we'll have someone in the church that's sick and will come to us to be anointed. James 5.13 so when we go into my office, before I anoint them with oil, I always pray that the Lord will forgive the elders and I of our sins. Because if we're in there with sin, God's not going to hear our prayer. So it has to start with us. And then I always ask for the person that's about to be anointed, anointed to have a pure heart. Amen. And that brings us to key number two. 
God answers our prayers when we pray according to his will. Go back to 1 John 3, 22. According to his will. Look at verse 14 again. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. The commentaries say this on the phrase according to his will. That is the son's will. Only the condition that our petition are in harmony with his will will be here mentioned. Education, page 258, adds, he makes, it, he makes it plain that our asking must be according to God's will. We must ask for the things that he has promised, and whatever we receive must be used in doing his will. In other words, friends, God doesn't answer our prayers when our prayer is outside of God's will. Yeah. Last time I told you I wanted a boat. Well, there's more to it. I also want a Corvette Stingray. <laughs> but you see, folks, that's my passion. I don't have a Corvette Stingray. Because that's not according to God's will. Amen. Told you last time I wanted a boat and I got an oar. I no longer have, have that oar, but I got my life jacket. God thinks I need a life jacket more than I need a boat. You, you see, folks, what I'm trying to say? We must pray according to God's will. I mean, why would we want him to answer our prayer if it wasn't according to his will? Ministry to Healing, page 230 says, We know that God hears us if we ask according to his will. But to press our petition without a submissive spirit is not right. Our prayers must take the form, not of command, but of intercession. Commentaries also says this on the word petition. A careful reading of John's words suggests that he has not given a blanket assurance about answer to a Christian's prayer so much as he is encouraging the Christian to discover the Lord's will and to frame his petition in harmony with the divine design in, in the sure knowledge that God approved prayers will receive the best possible answer. Why would we want God to answer our prayer if it's not according to his will? Now, with that in mind, here comes the big question. How do we know what God's will is? Last time we met, I gave you these verses. They were also in your bulletin insert. I challenged you to go home and look every verse up to find out what is God's will for you personally. Now, don't raise your hand. Answer in your heart. How many of you did that? Because let me show you what it... How do we know what God's will is? The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, your, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I gave you the verses to go home and look up what is God's will for you personally. Did you do it? Now, these verses are not in your bulletin insert again. So get last sermon and write them down and look them up. Folks, the Bible, God's word, shows us what his will is for us personally. Amen. The Bible says that God will guide, God will reveal his will, but he will reveal it through his word. We just have to follow God's leading. Amen. Why would God show you what his will is for you if you're not willing to follow his leading? So the principle of answer prayer, one, God will answer our prayers when we have a pure heart. Two, God answers when we pray according to his will. And number three, 
God answers our prayers when we pray in faith. Amen. What does James 1, 5 through 8 say? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him or her. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he or she who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Folks, we have to understand that faith is not just believing God can do what we ask him. Faith is that we believe that God will do what he says he will do. For example, oh, wait a minute. I, all right, call it. Many prayers are offered without faith. A set form of words is used, but there is no real appeal. These prayers are doubtful, hesitating. They bring no relief to those who offer them and no comfort or hope to others. The form of prayer is used, but the spirit is wanting, showing that the petitioner does not feel his need. Take uh, Abraham and Sarah. Remember now the Bible says they wanted a son. They prayed for a son for years and years. But then they got past the age of childbearing. So they probably just gave up. But what did God say later in their old life? You're going to have a son. But they doubted God could do that. At 90 years old, Sarah becomes pregnant. So I give some of you that are past childbearing some hope. That's right. Amen. In my life today, page 19, says the prayer that comes from an earnest heart when the simple wants of the soul are expressed, just as we would ask an earthly friend for a favor, expecting that it would be granted. This is the prayer of faith. Friends, if we ask God to do something, we're never to doubt him. Because if we doubt him, that's, that's not faith. But you ask him to do something according to his will. See, really, I don't want a Corvette Stingray. I don't need a Corvette Stingray. I'd rather have a Ferrari, but... <laughs> Testimonies, volume 5, page 427 says... His word can never fail. Heaven and earth may pass away, but his word will never pass away. Trust in the Lord and you will never be confounded or ashamed. Amen. I googled how many Bible promises there are in the Bible. And according to Bible Gateway, there are 5,467 promises that can be found. If you want to fact check it, you go and look up the, the 5,000 promises. Friends, now listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to say. Our faith will grow in God when we focus on his promises. Psalm 143, verse 5, again from the tree of life. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. One of the reasons why I love the Old Testament so much it's because the Old Testament is full of stories of great things, great promises that God did for his people. And the God who worked and kept the promises of the Old Testament is the same God that worked and kept the promises in the New Testament. And for your information, he's the same God today that will work and still keep his promises for us now. I want to bring this sermon in this series to a close by telling you one more story. It's a story about a father who had a five-year-old daughter. 
Well, one day the five-year-old daughter and the father were taking a walk. And the little five-year-old looked up. She's holding daddy's hand. She looks up and she says, Daddy, will you build me a playhouse in the backyard so I can have a place of my own to play with my toys and my dolls? Well, what would any good father say? Of course I will, sweetheart. I'll be happy to build you a playhouse in the backyard. Well, the little girl was so excited that when they got home, she ran upstairs to her bedroom. She started gathering all her dolls and toys. And she's taking them outside to the backyard. And she starts placing them all in one of the corners of the backyard fence. Well, the father sees all this happening. So he says to his wife, what is our daughter doing with all her toys outside? And the wife said, well, honey, you promised her that you would build her a playhouse. So she's just getting ready to receive the promise. Yeah. There you go. Friends, this is the way we should be with God's promises. Yes, One of the greatest promises he ever gave us is found in John 14. The first three verses. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. Folks, God promised us that he's building us mansions. And on the threshold is your name. And he says, someday soon I'm coming back to take you home to that mansion. Hallelujah. So are you packing and getting ready for the promise to be kept? Are you getting ready for Jesus to return? I sure hope so. Because never forget, if you hear nothing else I say today, hear this. God always keeps his promises. So now you know the principle to how God answers our prayers. When we come back in two weeks, we're going to start our Christmas series. I'm going to do a three-part series entitled... Do you hear what I hear? And we're going to start off looking at Luke 2 and the shepherds. When they heard the angels, what did they hear? So read Luke 2, 8 to 14, between now and two weeks. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the promises that you have given us. And the assurance that you always keep your promise. And I thank you for giving us these principles in your word of how we can know you hear our prayers and you will answer them according to your will. Help us to always be faithful to you no matter what. Forgive us where we have failed thee. And be with us this day we ask in thy name. Amen. Our closing song is page 4.